The SAPING stands for Sustainable Animal Productivity for Livelihood, Nutrition and Gender Equality. So SAPLING really looks at uh, um, better understanding livestock systems and livestock value chains across seven countries in, in Africa and, and Asia. We want to take advantage of working across all those, all those countries to support collaboration. Looking at, in, in this case, Nepal and Kenya, what can they learn from each other? What are the similarities and the differences? And what can they pick in terms of lessons learned or failures? And it is far more difficult if just individual projects work in individual countries. And we have learned that in previous experiences that there is this great opportunity for broader learning, but it is not so easy to do this in hindsight. So that's why when Sapling was actually set up, there was a, a lot of emphasis on introducing country research programs which would run in parallel and had uh, structural similarities so that lessons could be learned much easier. In Nepal, we are focusing on the dairy value chain, specifically with buffaloes, and specifically in the eastern lowlands of Nepal, where a lot of dairy production is concentrated. Specifically, we are partnering with the national research organizations and with local governments um, to support dairy cooperatives, but also the supporting institutions like the breeding organizations and the research organizations. As in all sapling value chain work, we focus both on technology improvements, bundled improvements of genetics, animal health and feeding, as well as the value chain integration, improving their productivity and their integration into markets, as well as being aware of the gender aspects and the nutrition implications of these interventions we are proposing. One of the major issues is the suitable breed for our country. And for uh, uh, talking in terms of breeds, then in for, uh, reducing the cost of production, uh, like in case of milk, meat, right? So it's a big challenge to reduce the cost of production because every farmer in Nepal, they say we are not in profit. Youth from Nepal, they are migrating to other countries for working. We came to, uh, to Kenya to see how uh, the livestock sector is coming up in Kenya and what are the uh, reasons behind it. Karl Rove we visited and we saw that they are really doing well. We don't have to change a lot. Small interventions, small changes can make a big change. Today I share with the uh, policymakers uh, Nepal ne policymakers about the uh, forage uh, production, especially climate smart forages, which can help small scale farmers to cut costs in one way or another. There are a lot of things that they can be able to learn from the way we are conserving our indigenous species. We talked about uh, the development of the indigenous chicken breed. Uh, uh, the conservation aspects that we are having around, uh, the way we are distributing the chicken all over the country. At the Dairy Research Institute of Karo, it is our pleasure and we felt that it was important to host the Nepal delegation. We had a conversation around uh, technologies, around innovations, around management practices on the livestock value chains here in Kenya. We also had to share with them uh, areas of collaboration with our partners and also they had to learn about the policy environment uh, that we are operating in. We uh, saw in Calro that they are working so nicely, working to conserve their indigenous breed and for production level, they are crossing the indigenous breed with the exotic breeds and uh, uh, disseminating the research work uh, to the uh, ground level, to the farmers, uh, in a very um, organized way. The livestock sector research is, uh, we have found quite good here in the Kenya, both in 
uh, in ILRI and from the government sector also. Breeding development area and uh, vaccination and uh, infectious disease control area, you have uh, this Kenya has done quite a lot and ILRI has also done quite a lot in this regard. And these things um, our knowledge has in, in enhanced to some extent. Uh, that's why uh, it will help us in coming days to replicate in Nepal. We have a limited uh, range land, especially in the high Himalaya region above 3000 meter elevation. And this uh, range land are uh, now degrading and we need to improve it. We have learned some ideas from the Kenya that range land management uh, is uh, one of the best option to, uh, to sustain wild animals and domestic animals side by side. Livestock is not just a single commodity. It's different animals. It's sheep and goats and cattle and camels, poultry and pigs. It's different commodities. It's meat and milk and eggs. And putting that again in different institutional and national settings, country economies are very different. Country institutional setups are very different, means that we need to do our research in, in real places on the ground, in real situations. One of the strengths as well that we have is that we're a global organization. So we do that research and tailor it in many different situations around the world. And that allows us to bring lessons as well from different parts of the world, so that when we work together with partners when we co-create solutions. We're not just looking at the national solution, if you like, we're looking at what, what worked somewhere else. How could we adapt this to make it work here on the ground? It is important we have evidence-based information, data, that support investment options for the livestock subsector. That is very key. Uh, especially when we are developing a livestock master plan, uh, which, which attracts investment from various development partners. It has to be for Nepal and for the Nepal people. We were really pleased to have the group of Nepali policymakers come and visit us, and we really look forward to working together and to making the lives of Nepali dairy farmers and of the consumers, of course, as well, better through livestock.